Welcome back, everyone, to Brews and Business Podcast. I'm your host, Brayden Cruz. Uh, this time, we're not streaming live, but we are recording at the Blue Studio here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, as always, I have my guest, Abel and Chance. How are you guys? Pretty good, man. Doing well. That's good to hear. Today's uh, podcast is about business, legal essentials, a little bit of insurance, liability, privacy, and social media with our spe- uh, special guest, Colton Richardson. How are you, man? Good, doing well. I'm glad to have you in. So your your mom, uh, your your dad and your grandpa have been in the legal industry for your, your third generation. Yeah, right. Like yeah. They've, been, they've been around for like what 40 years in the industry, right? Yeah, 83, 83, I think. So that's wow. when they started. Right at 40 years. Right, right at 40 years. Yeah. yeah. Where's our Where's our applause? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Running a business for 40 years is pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. So tell me a little bit about about yourself, kind of how you got into it. Um, and of course, that's kind of a no-brainer family, right? Yeah. But uh, what piques your interest and kind of what you do? Yeah, I was walking across the stage in kindergarten and said, told everyone in the crowd that I wanted to be a lawyer, but I didn't really know what that meant. And so, like I shared with you guys earlier, uh, there's three things I hated in under or, uh, high school, reading, writing, and public speaking, and somehow ended up at law school. But uh, went to undergrad at OU, learned I wasn't terrible at those things, and went to law school at TU, um, University of Tulsa, and prosecuted for a year or two. Um, I used to go home and tell people, or tell my wife, she's like, how's your day? I was like, put people in prison and she's like stop don't say that. <laughs> what a job somebody's <laughs> got to do it just trying to keep Tulsa safe but uh did that and then joined my dad and my granddad at uh Richardson Richardson Boudreaux yeah they've been in practice for a while the granddad's still out there saw him today um <clears throat> earlier this morning and she gets to practice with them so and their partners so enjoy that very cool that's awesome. Let's let's kick this off by kind of talking a little bit about insurance and not just like health insurance, but more in particular, like business insurance or like liability, um, professional insurance kind of thing or br- umbrella or anything like that. Um, understanding the role of that insurance and protecting like your business from potential liabilities and the various types of coverage that's available. Uh, I'm actually going through all mine again. Um, <laughs> so I went through all this in the beginning of the year, like a lot of you guys know. I would like to go through annually, just kind of double check policies, like workers' comp will change based on like salaries and employees and contractors and anything that changes like within the business, like number, uh, dollar amount of equipment changes and things like that too. So do you have any insights or any ideas or stories that would involve like the insurance realm of stuff? Yeah. And so that's, that's actually what we handle a lot is personal injury. And so we represent individuals against uh, insurance companies, whether it be car accident, nursing home abuse, products liability, dog bites, insurance bad faith, where you're going directly against the insurance company. Um, And what that is, is when an insurance company doesn't treat you right, Mm -hmm. you can go after them. Um, Because they have to do certain things. Uh, In the legal area, it's called, they have a duty of good faith and fair dealing. And so what that just means is they got to treat you right. And so when they don't do that, then you can sue them. So yeah, we handle that all the time. And I go through a bunch of different policies. Um, We handle a lot of car accidents and there's some different uh, types of coverage that you can have. So what are some of the types that you've been recommended for auto coverage? I mean, personally, yeah, uh, man. So running a business, obviously for auto, we've been recommended an umbrella just to cover everything because always have equipment and trailer on hand too. Um, And then, Oh, there's another one. I think it's like an inland marine policy. That's kind of similar, I think. A what? Uh, inland marine policy. Okay. I think that's someone similar uh, similar to the auto policy, um, but I think that actually may just cover equipment that's connected to the truck or something. I don't know exactly. I'll be entirely honest. I have someone that handles all this for me. So <laughs> <laughs> she's actually looking through that for this quarter too again um, for the similar aspects of, man, as your, your business progresses, your insurance needs change. So... For instance, even dealing on the lower end, man, what insurance covered me, you know, two years ago would be completely different. Mm -hmm. And that's just something you got to keep up on. It's always changing. Um, But I'm curious to say what what other insurance would you would you recommend? Yeah. And so on uh, business policies, it's especially important to have liability because you don't know what you're what's going to happen. And 
what your employees are going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, uh, when we sue, say, another driver who works for a company, we sue the individual, but we also sue the company because they're within the course and scope of their mm -hmm. employment. And mm -hmm. so the uh the dry, or the company is liable as well. So that's why it's really important to have liability insurance mm -hmm. in an umbrella as well. Um because I mean especially with inflation and everything, everything's just getting more expensive and more expensive, especially medical bills. So that's one <clears throat> Boop, there it is. <laughs> Trying to say, well, he was like, he was like, I'm on my way out, man. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> cut me, cut me. <laughs> going that almost had it. Almost had it. <laughs> that was good. Um, some other, some other important types of insurance, especially on the personal side, because especially if you're a business owner, you want to protect yourself personally as well. So, having. For example, an auto liability comprehensive inclusion. That's what a lot of insurance agents say is full coverage. There's no such thing as full coverage because that's not going to cover you fully in every situation. So some really important types of coverage to have, say personally, is uninsured or underinsured motorist mm -hmm. insurance. Um, Do you think that's worth it in Oklahoma? I think it's worth it, and so did the legislature. Uh, um, I've always had that. I've been on the back end look of that. Look at you. Have it. Yeah. Always have it. It's worth the whatever 15, 20 bucks you're going to pay a month. Just just pay it. Yeah. So uh, 25, about 20, I think it's 24% of Oklahomans don't have any insurance. Wow. And you're supposed to have insurance when you're driving on the road. Yeah. Wow. And the state minimum is 25,000. It's a joke. And that yeah. that can <laughs> go like joke. that. It does go quick. It's a joke. And I, See, I, that's I, where I like tell people, I'm like, pay for the insurance. Quit shopping about the price. Yep. Because when you shop for the price, people are like, of course, I mean, it's easy to get covered for 25. 25, what, 25, 50, 25 is typically what the average yep. is. Yep. Yep. But the, just like you said, what's the average price of a car? What's it cost to get one broken grand. bone, not even surgically repaired, but just to go to doctor visits and, and mm -hmm. stuff is like at least six or seven grand. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ER, like EMSA, it can run you like uh, five three grand, grand a trip. or something. Yeah. Three then grand. a quick trip, like three MRIs can cost you at some places nine grand. Wow. And sometimes they do that the day after. And so that 25 can be gone like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's so important to have that. And actually, in Oklahoma, the legislature made it where insurance agents are required to have you sign a document that is called an uninsured or underinsured mm -hmm. rejection form, mm -hmm. um, saying, I know what this is. It's been offered to me. I don't want it because they understand how important it really is. And people sign it and say, we don't want it. But on the flip side, if the insurance company can't produce that document later, then you automatically have your UM or UIM up to your liability limits. Mm. So that's another important reason to hire an attorney because they know all the how to find more coverage, really. So right. that's interesting because, you know, that's that's we recently went through that on a personal level because we went through it on a business level. So we went through the business, looked at all of our insurance, realized that for one, our auto was way under uh, under. Um, so we got all that fixed up. But then I started looking at it personally. And I think I was on like a maybe 50 150 or something and my insurance agent was like dude honestly we need to bump that up he's like if you look at it and again what's the average car of a, or yeah. average price of a car nowadays it's a hundred grand you drive a lot it's a hundred grand and it's like you i mentioned that car early that we hit the 2022 <laughs> toyota or whatever it was like seven grand back in 2020 yep. now that's going to be closer to 10 yep. you know and in a situation like that we started to realize like wow we're we're undercovered drastically and if something happens man honestly let me put it in the same perspective that i feel like a lot of america will understand you pay your monthly car payment because why because you don't want to deal with the repairs on a monthly basis you'd rather just pay your monthly car payment think about the insurance the same way do you want to pay that monthly payment that's a little bit higher but you know you're covered in case of shit goes south or do you want to pay that lower price and pay for the repairs whenever they come along do you want you're going to get sued. You're not going to have enough coverage. Do you want to deal with that then or do you want to deal with it now? Um, so I think that we went through that and it kind of just put everything in perspective of like, wow, 
there's so many people that are undercover. And the big thing that was an eye-opener for me was my little brother actually got hit right up the street, right in front of St. Francis. Or actually, no, he hit somebody. Um, Could have been a surgeon. It, I don't know who it was. And then it would have been, like, if you didn't have much money and say that surgeon couldn't do surgery anymore. Right. Yeah, right. Now exactly. You're on the hook. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it, thankfully, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, but, but he ended up hitting <laughs> some, some car or something, and he only had 25, 50, 25. And the company... Closed out the whole thing, right? The insurance company, it's done. And then a couple months later, he gets another paper that says, hey, by the way, you're getting sued. So on and so forth. And he, he's like freaking out. And I look over the paper. I'm like, well, Aaron, you're fucked. He's like, what do you mean? I have insurance. I'm like, no, 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 no. You had state minimum. You don't have insurance, bro. This is like a joke. It's a badge. That's all you have. Like, according to the, the records here, you know, you're going to be liable for at least $16,000 extra from what the insurance already paid. And he's like, well, how do I, how do I deal with that? I'm like, well, you need to get a lawyer first of all. I'm like, but second, I'm like, pay the insurance, pay the insurance, cover yourself. Cause in the back end, like you said, maybe you can't have full coverage. Cause that's a, not necessarily I realistic, but you can cover a lot more bases. If I don't, you just I don't think my, my employees or my team really understands what all, what all I look into to making sure that our ass is covered. Oh, so sure, for example, yeah. like, uh, recently, uh, I realized that our workers comp policy is two policies, actually one that covers our people here in the office and, and uh, clients, if you, I don't know, break your toe and need surgery, <laughs> slip and fall or whatever, or if you're out on a construction job site and you slip and fall or, you know, break your wrist or whatever happens, like there's two different policies that we have to cover them in different ways. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to dead armadillo brewery for supplying us with these delicious beers. They gave us to these uh, a couple episodes ago on our uh, episode about the IT mm -hmm. and technology with solutions Jim and stuff like that with Jim Heron yep. and uh, Hummingbird Tech. Uh, I'm drinking the Boat Monkey. It's the Deck Hand Lager. It's pretty good. I like it. What are you drinking? Tulsa Flag? Tulsa Flag. I like this one. I think I had uh, it last time. Nice. Yeah. And yeah, and you've got this stout by them, huh? Dillo Tracks. Dillo Tracks? Yeah, it's like stout. peanut butter and chocolate. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Pretty good. I'm not a beer guy and I like it, so... I appreciate you guys uh, supplying this and uh, we'll look forward to seeing the next case. <laughs> um, so another thing I want to talk about is employee neg negligence, employee negligence. What kind of, what kind of stories or ideas do you guys have on in that topic? So before we leave that, can I ask one question? Yeah. You just brought up a wonderful, wonderful situation. Beer? Let's say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aside from that one. Uh, okay. So you, you make a great point. Let's say Devin's out on one of my job sites, right? And in that job site, he happens to get hurt, right? How does the insurance handle that? Let's say personal injury. Devin goes to go straight to you. Let's say in the process, he got hurt. Doesn't matter. We took care of him, everything. He's back at work, whatnot. But he still goes to you. How does the insurance company see that? How, how, is, how does having a lawyer on your side help? Yeah. You know, how does, how does knowing all that help? Because in that position, you're essentially fighting for Devin, right? Which doesn't necessarily make us the bad guys, but you're not fighting for the business owner on this and you're fighting for Devin. What are the stages of that? Because you said earlier that we would sue the, uh, would you say the, the driver of mm -hmm. the truck as well as the company of that truck? I'm curious how that works out. And like Brayden just said, that perfect situation where I have my insurance to cover my people. He's got ins his insurance to cover his people. He happens to be doing work on my job site. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Yeah. So uh, are you talking about workers' compensation side? Or just, just in general, what does that look like? Because so like I've got my workers' comp for that too, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, what is that type of? situation look like you know obviously it could be workers comp it could be liability whatever you know well, what is let's say yeah. you got it on your desk and all you know is hey this was abel's job site he was performing work but devin was there on behalf of sms they both have their insurances devin came to you and that's all you know what what are you thinking there what are you looking at yeah so first of, i mean so negligence that's kind of what you base it off of negligence is Four different elements. First element is there's a duty owed. Second thing is there's a breach of that duty. Third thing, third and fourth thing is caused damages. And so on the workers' comp side, that's completely separate. They have their own court and everything. Oh, wow. And so 
we handle on the liability side, okay. um, where it's just negligence. And so I'll give you some examples uh, on a few different cases. <laughs> you want to kind of? Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> It's too late. It's fine. <laughs> we'll we'll cut out stuff, you know. So like this isn't live. <laughs> so did you did you all know we could go live? Like on, I I could I could make TikTok. the I can make it to where we go live on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Spreaker, iHeart, like all at the same time. Through one app. Through one app. That's, that's kind of nice. That's yeah. cool too. On your watch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we look like. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. But so I'll give you a few examples. One guy hired us. He was hit by a drunk driver. You know where that drunk driver was coming from? Work. The Tulsa Home and Garden Show. Oh, wow. He was working there. So he was on the Recently? job. Recently? Uh, this was probably oh, two this wasn't the years ago. One. Okay. So it wasn't last month. Two or three month. years ago. It wasn't last month. <laughs> no. <laughs> we all get excited. We're like, did this just happen? Yeah, I know. I was thinking, I was like, oh, man. Did I see him? I missed a good party. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently he was working, and then he'd go over to some booth, take some shots or something, and go back to whatever booth it was some lawn and garden uh company but um the, so we sued the company and the driver wasn't me bro <laughs> it wasn't you i don't do lawn um, and garden yet <laughs> <laughs> so we sued the company and the driver but come to find out he actually had two or three previous duis mm. oh, wow. and he was driving a company car and oh. so really the company shouldn't have even let him be driving right, right. Right. So it's really important to do your background search. Yeah. So I, I represent individuals um, in that situation, but I also represent employees. Like I have a truck driver who got rear-ended by another truck driver. Right. So we're representing one of them, the guy that wasn't at fault. And actually, the guy that hit him fell asleep at the wheel. Oh, wow. And so his truck got destroyed. Um, our guy was stopped, and he was driving probably Ooh. 65 miles an hour. Um, another story is seen that. I know. I'm like loaded down. Yeah. That sucker caused some damage. Oh, Holy shit. That his front end was gone. destroyed. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he was kissing the back of that trailer. Yeah, it was <laughs> gone. Dude, I'm sure. I, Where's the button? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you, with my dad being a trucker, I've seen some gnarly semi wrecks, and dude, you think it, they just get so bad so fast? Oh, yeah. All that weight is it's just uncontrollable. I mean, it's crazy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Another thing is Amazon. What they, they've been, they have been pushing people to deliver more. And so some Amazon drivers are just peeing cups and they have, uh, and so they're encouraging them to drive faster. You remember Domino's like 20 minutes yeah, or 20 minutes free? or less. Yeah, yeah. 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 Have you guys heard about that? Yeah. Story? They got sued because yeah. people got hurt or whatever. Yeah. Cause because they were trying, trying to make the 30 minutes. Yeah. Cause then I think it, they would take that money out of the, the delivery driver's uh, check or something if it didn't if get, they didn't make it didn't yeah. make it within time or some shit yeah. yeah something like that and so a lot of times it's just companies putting profit over people okay um so those are a few examples does that answer your question yeah no it absolutely does because again i'm just just curious about how that that looks obviously like you said i know workers comp yeah the workers comp is like the one big thing that all businesses like i fucking hate workers comp yeah. right yeah. but it's one of those things necessary evil right you just have it deal with it when you got to deal with it um, and whenever you need it, it's actually really nice. Like, yeah. you know, cover your back and get you all, you know, yeah, you pay for that insurance. But whenever you need it and you got all your ducks in a row, they help you out pretty good. Yep. You know, yep. So. Absolutely. We had a case. So in Oklahoma, actually, like if, say, you're an employee or, and you actually did something wrong and your employee was hurt, you you can't be sued unless it was like you intentionally did it. So you can do it. it I don't mean to say it like this, but you can do it out of uh, not negligence, but what's, what's reckless? The no, there's a word. Stupid. If, if you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> no, it's not negligence, but there's a word similar to Just it. Just because you don't know something doesn't mean you're excused from it either. Right. Yeah. But if you don't know, you don't know. So right. you don't know what you don't know. Right. So if you don't know something was dangerous or sketchy, you shouldn't have been doing it. How are you at blame if you were never taught, told, or even knew that that was dangerous? Yeah. So workers comp is, it's not fault based. Okay. So like it can, someone can stub their toe. I mean, when uh, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like my dad, I'm gonna give you something to cry someone, about. Yeah, <laughs> break someone, that toe. <laughs> someone can slip, and like it, it could be the company could not be at fault at fault at all. An employee could slip and get hurt, and they could get compensation under workers' comp. But under liability, like if you're sued the business uh, as a um, customer. There has to be some kind of fault there. And so workers' comp is really a no-fault system. 
Okay. So okay. unless it's intentional, an employee can't sue their employer, but there's some situations. So we had someone working he, there. She was a, a yard jockey. Um, I think is what she called it. She would drive, just kind of drive uh, where at a warehouse and drive merchandise from bay to bay. Okay. And uh, she worked for the driving company, but they worked at a warehouse for another company. Mm-hmm. Right. And what the warehouse would do is they would unload the um, the the drive material, whatever. Yeah, whatever was back there, like dishwashers or something. They would unload it and keep it top heavy, and they wouldn't unstack it for to go to the next place. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, it caused the entire trailer to flip over, and she was severely injured oh wow and so you could actually sue the warehouse as well but she couldn't sue her own employer hmm. so interesting yeah it gets in the weeds but yeah. what was it what was the next thing we were talking about negligence actually yes <laughs> i mean th- that's such a good topic though i mean well, we- it was just a question that i feel like honestly with insurance a lot of our understanding as business owners is we have to have insurance But I love having a different perspective of why you want that insurance not to be again. I'm not nobody's a bad guy here, but in a sense, if he's coming after you, you want to make sure that you're CYA, Mm -hmm. whatever you can do to get that as a business owner. And it helps if you have an understanding of how the insurance and how lawyers work with all that. You know, there's some situations where maybe we might overthink it or maybe we underthink it. And it's nice to have a perspective from the back end of like, well, like you said, no fault type situation is, well, okay. So I don't really have to worry about all situations still need to have my insurance is all that covered, but it helps if you just understand just kind of how the lawyers would see and how the prosecution looks, looks at that from the backside. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Our next topic is about social media and content liability. This is going to be a good one for you. I know that because you're (laughs) all over social media, just like I am. Uh, And you're not, Yet. I'm what? working on it, I'm working dude. On it. You're doing great. We explore. So this name. is this is gonna be <laughs> legally. <step or>? one. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about this that on is, the podcast. This is gonna be good for you to know as you explore the avenues of social media channels. <laughs> Welcome to social. Uh, so speaking of exploring, we're gonna explore some of those legal aspects of social media and the content creation, touching on some issues such as intellectual property rights, defamation, and privacy concerns. Man. Uh have you ever heard of someone being sued because of a video they put on social media? I know that they have, it's caused them issues in court, right? Because they publish something online and they're in, you know, um, a child, not child support court, but whatever it is, like, you know, they're getting a divorce and then they pull up a video that dad pulled up, you know, posted years ago and he was a kid and he was like smoking marijuana or something with his friends. And that was like 15 years ago. And they're like, look, he's a bad father. And the judge is like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Family, <laughs> right? Like, family courts are. Uh, there's a reason why I don't do family law. <laughs> I don't want to deal with any of that. But yeah, they will scrape anything. And even like after you're in an accident, people like the defense attorneys even ask for what's your Facebook. They'll go and scrape data. Why and- do you think I'm not on social media? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you're Can't in an accident. Find it's a trail. <laughs> They'll get, oh, wow, you played baseball this one day. You said you were hurting. But it's like, okay, my uh, left great. pinky hurt. Not yeah. Not like my back for swinging or something. Um, there's something else I was gonna go off. Here. So what 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 issues or things do you see that could arise from like just the business aspect of it? Yeah. So obviously saying stuff uh, incorrectly or even defamation. Um, so uh, saying things that are inaccurate and not true about other people. Um, that could definitely get you in trouble. There's actually a, a court case that said that uh, you can't use financial advisors can't use certain emojis. Did you guys see that? I've what? Seen that. Yeah, it's like you can't use the rocket ship and something else when you're talking about finances because it'll be construed as financial advice or something. So if you say like, because they see the rocket and they're like, oh, this means growth. Yeah, like BTC rocket. And they're like, bye. <laughs> People have been sued for that. Game Isn't that crazy? To the moon. Yeah, <laughs> that is insane. So it's it, there's some crazy stuff coming out, and I think there's something about um, I don't handle this, but employment law, how emojis can get you sued for sexual harassment as well. So. Man, people will just sue you over anything. I was just about Sometimes, to say that. Sometimes, yeah. That's just... Oh. And they just about can. 
Yeah. I mean, right? you, know, I mean, you can. You can sue anybody over anything. You can, yeah. You can now, will sue. it, will it will exactly. hold up there you go. and actually go into a case? And that's different. But you can. I can sue you. If, I don't like your shirt. That's You know what? That's my shirt. Emotional damage. <laughs> 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 yeah. That blue is costing me emotional damage. Yeah. Well, as far as like on the privacy part, I know like that's been huge, especially with the whole uh, so-called TikTok ban bill. Mm -hmm. Right. You've been following that? Uh, a little <laughs> bit. I There's so much in privacy. Uh, that's the good thing. A lawyer, the same thing, like you wouldn't go to a dentist for your brain surgery. And so I don't know a whole lot about that. But I know sometimes um, you can actually... Uh, you know those spam calls you get? Mm -hmm. If you get on the do not call list, you can actually get like, I don't know exactly how you do it yet. I'm going to try to figure it out. I tried. It doesn't like work. Like $1,500 if this they call you. Each call. Dude, you want to make some money? I've got a <laughs> yes. list of blocked calls, bro. <laughs> I'll split it with you 50-50. I'll share, share my lead list. <laughs> That's what it is. It's just a big old lead list for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So interesting stuff. But yeah, privacy is very important. And I only see it getting more important in the future. So speaking of dollar amounts, did you know that if you don't have a privacy policy on your website, that you can be fined uh, starting at $2,500 per website visitor? Oh, wow. Per website. Does it matter like how many visitor. web pages you have? So it doesn't matter how many pages. It's the number of visitors. Visitors. So okay. they'd be based on sessions. So if you were to see the reports that I see, I mean, my clients on managed WordPress, they're covered. So like, they <laughs> have okay. those privacy policies. Let me there. let me ask you this. That's that's a great question. So obviously you set me up with that. You set me a little thing I had to sign or whatever, right? Yeah, you've been taking care of for yeah, like a I, year. Yeah, two. right. But um, before that, you're but, screwed. Well, yeah, probably <laughs> was. I probably was, honestly. You should have seen the shit show we had to go through to get Brayden to get us our website. It was a mess. Um, but in that particular instance, okay, let's say he didn't have the privacy policy. Or, or I didn't, right? And you came to sue me. Is that a thing where you're like, well, my website developer never told me. Is well, that, that's, that's, where, that's thing, where it right? could come back onto me. Well, that's what Because I'm they're like, well, who built the website? But if you... Okay. And see, like, if I if you signed a document that says that you approved all everything on right. the website, then right. now it's your fault. You're back. Which but is you, why. But then you could hold him liable for fiduciary, uh, breach of fiduciary. Right, duty. because he, he should have told me. He but does, known. is the 2500 like a regulation? Like regulating? I uh, don't understand the terminology. Is it? That question. It's not someone suing him for 2500 no, it's fines. It's fines. Okay. They're okay. fines. Yeah. So it's like the state. The or state something. FCC yeah. or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, so that's with the state. But on a liability side, if someone went to your website and you have to prove that there's been some type of damage. Right, right. So there has to be, oh, my credit card got hacked and I From lost $10,000. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, but for the most part. Don't take credit cards on my website, baby. <laughs> then you're, you're totally fine. <laughs> Just kidding. So for those for those of you guys who don't know what a privacy policy is, it's a document that discloses what personal information that you collect on your website and what you do with that information and who you share it with amongst with other disclosures. Like your website needs a privacy policy no matter what, um, even, especially if you have a contact form or you have a newsletter subscribe or – uh, what's another one? payment processing, things like that. Most websites, they collect personal information through the use of the, like those contact forms and things yeah. like that. Um, you have to also disclose if you track through Google Analytics, if you like do the whole cookie thing, have you ever, ever visited a website and a little pops up and says, do you accept that we track your cookies? <laughs> now all these websites all are starting to have to those that. and they're yeah. legally required. So, and there's another thing too. If you just operate, let's say in the state of Oklahoma, but somebody from North Carolina visits your website. You have to abide by North Carolina's privacy policies. So are they all different? They're all different. Well, every state operates. California. They don't even have like one worse. uniform. I know that's a, no. That's politics to a team, man. They're they're all different. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Um, New York is different than California. Different than West Virginia. Like West Virginia just updated theirs. Um, uh, North Carolina updated theirs a couple months ago too. So what are the Orlando. updates? Well, they, they just say that like like the whole cookies thing now. Mm -hmm. All these states are now updating their policies to require um, any websites or whatever companies to put those on the, onto their website. And so, like, again, if you don't have those, what are the, again, what are the odds? Yeah. But are you going to play the odds by not having good insurance? No. Nope, are going to play I'm the not. odds by I not I told paying, you I pay extra for By not having <laughs> a privacy policy on there? Nope. You know, like, no. Um, 
I mean, there's like a ton of huge benefits. I've got so many notes on this. It's so cool. So currently the, there are multiple privacy laws in the United States and across the world that require most websites that collect personal information to have one, right? So for example, like the GDPR, um, if you do not turn off your, if you do not allow traffic from outside of the US and you allow traffic from Europe, you, have now, you now have to abide by the GDPR rules. So for example, like my website, we, we allow traffic from Australia, from Europe. It doesn't matter. It's traffic. You're going to read a blog post about something to do with marketing, right? I want that traffic. doesn't mean I'm going to service somebody in Australia. It's just a website visitor. It's just a website visitor. I'll highlight on that one, right? So what we do is like we know that typically whenever we publish a website, we'll install an app called WordFence. And then if we know that like, okay, well, they're not going to operate outside of the United States and also to help reduce with spam and, and – um, phishing and like people just putting in contact. Have you ever received a contact form where it's like, okay, this is definitely spam. Yeah. Okay. So like we block out certain areas of like outside of the United States just by default. We just have that setting. We just kind of turn that on. Um, United Kingdom's data privacy protection act. This was, um, it's probably been updated, but that started in 2018. That's the UK DPA 2018. Canada has one as well. The PIP EDA. The Australia Privacy Act of 1988, the California Online Privacy Protection Act, the California Consumer Privacy Protection Act, Delaware Online Privacy Protection Act, Nevada Revised uh, Statute Chapter 603A, California Privacy Act uh, went into effect in 2023, uh, Virginia Consumer Data Privacy Protection Act uh, goes into effect in 2023, and these laws were ideally created to protect the consumers of those states and countries not just the business. So this means that these laws can apply to businesses outside of those states and countries and may apply to you if you do business there, collect personal information of residents of those states or countries or offer goods or services there. I always thought living in the Bible Belt was a bad thing, but as I get older, we still have our guns and we don't have to have privacy policies. I think we're good. <laughs> he didn't say Oklahoma. <laughs> well, no, like, so when I, it's like, when I did the, the first giveaway, I had to set up different contracting for California, yep, New York, that. Florida. Like they all had, yeah. I mean, it's oh, it's it's bureaucratic and it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. So you understand a little bit of that too, because yeah. when you do the whole giveaway thing, you had no idea when you first went into no, it. No, what it entailed. You're like, oh, I'm gonna give this car away. It's gonna be cool. Yeah. When I first started, I was like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. You know, I, I messaged a few people that have done it already, have done it for years, and. Uh, I got warned multiple times not to do it, you know. I went ahead and did it anyway. But, yeah, for California, Florida, New York, I had to have separate agreements with um, their sweepstakes laws for those states. Yeah, and had to have different filings for different states. I was so stupid. So it put me back like three months because, of course, you don't know what you don't know until I actually went to go try to do it. Like, oh, no, you have to do this. You have to fill out this. You have to, you know, make sure you're in compliance with different states. Because like you said, every state's different. The privacy policies, how you can run the sweepstakes. Why is it a sweepstakes? Why is it not a lottery? Uh, it's it's just bureaucratic overreach, in my opinion. I don't like small government, so <laughs> it's so, so much easier. So the, this goes back into the whole conversation we were talking about. Like, I built it. We built ARC's website. You know, and we want to make sure that that, that that privacy policy and stuff like that is on there. Yeah. We can't fill out those forms. We, I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of his, of his business. And if he doesn't know the technical questionnaires that go through that, the, the any of the legal questions that are in there, um, which he should refer to as contract. And if he doesn't have a contract, then he needs to talk to a contractual attorney, right? Is yeah. That what they're called? Uh, what are yeah. the, what's the term? Transactional. Where the, like, where they, where the, uh, Lawyers just create contracts. Business uh, contracts. So there's usually there's transactional attorneys and litigation. Transactionals do a whole bunch of contract review and that kind of thing. So probably business contracts. Okay. So someone of that nature. Yeah. So then he would want to make sure that his, his contracts have the like the correct legal elements in that. And then that would kind of follow through into his privacy policies and terms of service and stuff. You yeah. Know? So like that software that that we integrate and that we embed on to the privacy policy of his website, it's automatically updated as those states update and as they decide to get a hair up their butt and change something <laughs> we don't have to like we like we can get notified about it but we don't have to make any changes to it That's unless fine. it involves like a questionnaire part then we have to go back in or you'll get a request now that says hey so and so state just updated 
you need to go in and answer the answer a couple questions. You or know. put a question on there or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So privacy policy, terms of service, disclaimer, and an end licer end user license agreement. All right. Quick so, question for everybody at the table. Do you read the terms of service? Hell no. Nobody does. Do you does. read the terms of service? I'll be honest. It depends on what it is. This was but another yes, thing about the answer. TikTok stuff. No, depending on what it is, I do. Because do you, sometimes if you read this fine print, there's some stuff hidden in there. Yeah, that, there is. There is. That you can use to your advantage. Like straight up use to your advantage if you just read the fine print. And that's true. I mean, you just <laughs> you just got to read it. Like it literally. So so put a perspective. Um, our company, we're an LLC, but we file as an S-Corp. We, Pause that right? for a second. Quick yes or no. Do you read them? Uh, for the most part, no. See, again. For the most part. For, again. <laughs> but but the reason I say this is, okay, everybody says, and again, I, you know that I come from a non-entrepreneur family. Right. No lawyers, no, like, uh, professional uh, anything, right, in my family. So, Blue collar. Yeah, we're blue, blue collar. collar. Exactly. Fine. We're blue yeah. collar as can be. And I, I love it, man. You know, we talked about the trades and you need trades, yeah, baby. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, but it puts in perspective because, uh, man, I remember what it was. I just lost my train of thought. Sorry. It'll but come back reading, around. Yeah, it'll come back around. But reading those privacy policies, I'm telling you, I just do the help. They help tremendously sometimes. Or those fine details, if you just read them, uh, they have helped me out a couple of times if, if I care. Again, for social media and stuff like that, dude, that, you already track me. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you're no me, you, you can have whatever you want. Like, I can care less. But, yeah. So, with as much as that you, Colton, are on social media and with the space that you're in, what do you do or what are you aware of that you need to do when you're creating your social media content? So, you got to be careful what you say, right? Yeah. Like, that's a given. Yeah. But like, yeah. is there any thoughts that you go through and you're like, okay, before I make this video, I have to make sure that I do not say, or that I do say, or that I have to represent in a certain way. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. I got to make sure that, uh, whoever's watching it knows that it's legal information and not legal advice because legal advice would be a specific situation. And I can't tell you based on, uh, not even knowing you're talking to you what to do in your situation. It could be that you only need $100,000 in coverage, but it could be that you need $250,000. I have no idea. Now, to be safe, get 250, but that's I got to be careful about that, not saying free legal advice, just there's legal information. Uh, and you tell a lot of stories though. Oh yeah, and stories you can't really, I mean, what are they going to say? That's well, false. So I don't I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, is there any issues with like telling stories? Because so telling like stories. here on Bruising Business, we love telling stories, and like that's what's so fun about it is it's show style, and we all get yeah. an opportunity to like sit at a table together and talk about stories, oh, share yeah. experiences and stuff. So like, you know, in the sharing story aspect, what what should we be concerned about? You know, I think about that sometimes too. I'm like, you got to be careful what you say. The whole Joe Rogan podcast stuff, mm-hmm. like he doesn't say too much. Yeah, he lets everyone talk on his podcast. Yeah, and ask questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, really you can't violate the attorney client privilege. Um, that's one thing. So something that they told me, I don't necessarily want to say it because then that could ruin the attorney client privilege, especially during while a case is going on. Then once the case is resolved, a lot of times there's a confidentiality clause in the settlement agreement. And so we can't talk about the amount settled, but I can, I mean, sometimes it's general knowledge, but if it goes to trial, then all of that's, public knowledge, public access. Um, the verdict. So how much it was, uh, like state farm, they got popped for three fifty and $700,000 in Oklahoma city last year. Cool. Um, and that's public knowledge, but if they were to settle a week before trial, even during trial, that would be probably confidential. And so sometimes you can't disclose all of that information. So whenever I'm telling stories about a client's particular situation, I usually don't use names or give away too much detail where people are like, oh, yeah, that mm. happened to this guy. Just so, kind of vaguely touch the topics. Which I did make a video and someone legit said who the defendant was in the video. In the caption, I was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But I feel like with that, you know, with the story <laughs> aspect, 
again, a lot of this comes down to, to, to lawyers and all that BS, right? But <laughs> Yeah, it's all BS. It's, it's all, come on. <laughs> I, you know, I had a really good friend once that told me, he's like, all they did in law, and forgive me if this is wrong, but he's like, all they did in law school was teach me to read through the BS. He's like, you find the stuff you need to read. He's like, the rest of it's just BS, his, hairs, theirs, whatever. So, but there's like certain things that are important, but you just basically learn how to read through all, through all that. Um, but, uh, uh, man. <laughs> one of those it's days yeah, right we'll one of those it. days we'll find it eventually <laughs> yeah law school doesn't teach stay you. on that train oh i remember <laughs> oh, oh okay, okay. Okay. we're back so, on welcome ladies on. and gentlemen so so <laughs> the story aspect it's like well technically if you're telling a story it's hard to prove if it's fictional or non-fictional right so you might be telling a story and it's literally you don't know if you have no names no time no reference nothing you don't know if you just made up the story and it's just a great story yeah or if it's an actual real thing that happened and you're just flipping it so in I a sense like that for 10 million dollars this morning right I'm you, just there's no well, there's no one to prove you did it didn't right so again that's what i feel like yeah how much of that wow. comes to you <laughs> that's a real question uh, confidential yeah there you go there you go but like i said I, I just feel like with the story aspect it is you know, if you're just telling stories, man, you're just telling a, a, it could be fiction. It could be nonfiction. It's more or less you're telling an emotion that happened in that. In that yeah. Situation. And that's that's what people like the most, especially on social media, is the stories. And so I told a story about, I mean, honestly, I sued the same lady twice. And that was because her dog bit a kid first time. Then she uh, ran, she hydroplaned on the highway and ran into someone and killed him. Oh, wow. And it was, it was like two months apart. And we oh. both got... The same, the the same cases. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy how it happened. But or different cases, but the same yeah. same victim. Yeah, two, or same two different lady. victims. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, and so they both came to us randomly. So it was pretty crazy. Um, but then another story I told on uh one of my videos on social media was I turned a two thousand dollar offer into twenty five thousand dollars. That's pretty cool. So telling stories like that really helps because it's not just like pie in the sky stuff. Yeah. Right. So right. Cool. What do you do to stay up on compli like compliancy um, or news and stuff? Like, where do you find all that stuff? Yeah, so especially on news, I I get emails. Have you heard the hustle or the brew? I think or the skim. Y'all get those emails? Mm -hmm. Oh no! Oh, there. It's it kind of gives you a synopsis of what happened yesterday, like the top highlights. And so I get those three in the morning and re read through them. Um, just spend five or 10 minutes reading through them and get synopsis of the top news of what happened. And a lot of times it's not biased. Like it just tells you what happened, which mm -hmm. is nice. And then honestly, sometimes I get video ideas and I make a video like, Oh, this product's been recalled or something like that. So. Those are pretty cool. Do you have any, I'm going to take one, one step back. Do you have any with providing legal information? Not advice. Nice. Okay. Or uh, like we're not in a contract, but give me some information or some ideas of what you would recommend to somebody who is creating content. Yeah. For social media to kind of help protect them and their brand. Yeah. Is there yeah. any ideas behind that? Like uh, creating content, just be safe legally. Yeah. Like, hey, I want to, you know, I want to make social media content for my brand, my company, yeah. my personal image or whatever. But I want to make sure and I do so. I don't want to like say or say or do something that comes back and bites me later. Yeah. You know, cause I feel like that some people like what you just kind of said earlier, maybe one of the reasons why Abel's not proactively consistently on social media is because he's like more than outside. Maybe I have the time. I don't have the time. It's like, I don't, I don't maybe I don't want something to come back and bite me. Right. Yeah. Like I think I've heard some people talk like that. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are they concerned about coming back to bite them? I don't know. Just, Politicians, man. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's like when I first started out, Honestly, I almost deleted Instagram everything uh, like three years ago or something. I almost deleted it the other day. Uh, right. <laughs> and a few days before I that. I did do it. <laughs> <laughs> I almost deleted it like for good. And then I was like, why don't I use this for for good? A little off topic. Did you know because of Instagram changing the way that they want people to use the platform, TikTok has gotten rid of the share to Instagram button? Really? Have you seen that? Yeah, uh, seen so it. anytime you make a video right before you hit post, you'll see that the little share button's on the bottom. Yeah, they have Facebook, they have uh, Snapchat, Snapchat, and then uh, Message or something else like that, or yeah. uh, WhatsApp or whatever. But Instagram used to be there, but they're not because Instagram doesn't want TikTok videos on their platform. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's not got, gonna. They got offended. They want and they don't want anybody to make videos outside of the platform. 
Yeah, so like if you make it in Premiere and publish it, they won't push it. Really? Because I make all mine out of TikTok. I never record it. I don't edit it in there. I heard that from a number of social media people, professionals in the realm. So you do everything on TikTok mm. with the editing? Just the No, time? I don't do anything. Oh, you I just, just you... upload it and post it. Oh, okay. Because I have a virtual assistant overseas. Nice. He edits all my videos and sends them to me. And now he started doing my YouTube too. And so I like, I might see it um, before, I, before I post it. I usually look at them for like a couple minutes, like a bulk at them. Right. Um, but besides that, I don't really look at them. So, but. Because you know, like you've got the standard there. You know, you know what you said. <laughs> yeah. You recorded it. Yeah. You yeah. shared any notes with yeah. your editor that's like, ah, hey, maybe don't include this part or yeah, hey, it, do this or whatever. If there's anything particular, but most of the time, like your editor has gotten kind of used to, yeah. you know, your rhythm. Yeah. You know? And he, <laughs> I was on the phone with him one day and he's like, you've gotten better in your videos. Like, gee, first of all, you th thought I was terrible, <laughs> which I was, <laughs> but thank you. Um, no, I shot one. I was like, uh, the hook was, is it illegal to flip off a cop? And like in the video, I flip them off. <laughs> and I was you like, You did that? Hey. Yeah, except we lost the video. And so I'm going to have to redo it. But or I was you like, flipped off a cop? Flip the cop wasn't there, but I flipped off the camera. And I was like, Kind of probably blur that out. Um, so things like that I do. And I know you might want to censor words or cussing on videos. Hmm. Is that with TikTok? I don't I think mean, TikTok. I've, I've heard people. Oh man! Do they go fuck, at it? Fuck, buck on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> heard them go off. Yeah, I don't know. I just download some app that captions. It'll cut out cussing for you. Oh yeah, or they'll, they'll throw in like fudge or do you know, ship. Do you know Bobby got banned from TikTok? He they deleted his account because he was going live wearing shorts, short shorts, playing the VR. What? Yeah. Interesting. I said it violated community guidelines. Oh, so I have posted a video on TikTok and it violated community guidelines. And it was some car accident, but it's like other people were posting it. They won't so. let anything marijuana on there. Not, really? No smoking. Nothing. Not, 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 not even the leaf. If they detect, like, it's immediate. Like, within like within seconds of posting it. That's crazy. Because I had, I created uh, last, last year? Yeah, last year. Yeah, it was year. last year. I had three... Um, Grows, wasn't it? Three. I had a grow where I created three accounts for to kind of see how we could play with the platform. Yeah. And posted different videos on each one, and they were all like pop, 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 pop. Just what were the deleted. videos of? Like Lease or? They were of uh, the grow. Oh, um, wow. Or somebody would be smoking in the video. So, you know, whenever it comes to like promoting the cannabis side of stuff, when it comes to like the legal or whatever on social and the guidelines and whatever else, um, it's really weird. Like YouTube almost doesn't give a shit. Yeah. They don't care. Um, everything's on YouTube. You could watch people hitting bong ribs. But, but they're YouTube. the original video content. I mean, they, they're yeah. the original. So, I mean, like if you're smoking a cigar, will it cut it out? Or will it? Uh, I don't know. I've got guidelines? a cigar. Let's try it. We should. <laughs> That's interesting. Cause like, how do they tell a cigar from weed? I mean, it looks different, obviously. From a cigarette, from weed. Or yeah. yeah. But, but I've heard you smoke, can't smoke. I mean, you can't tell the difference. You can't but I've heard you all. can't smoke at all on it. Dang. Well, I mean, I'm just going to throw this out there. I've seen, I don't know how many videos of Andrew Tate smoking a cigar on TikTok. And That's but then again, oh, how man. do they know the difference? And how do they detect it so fast? Like, like seconds, man. I'm telling you. That is crazy. Maybe no name. hashtags. Oh, so Marijuana like for one of our, for, so for one of our cannabis clients, we don't put anything in the captions. Zero. And, and ever since we didn't put anything in the captions, ever since we stopped writing captions, they, they, no problems. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. It's really we weird. could post a picture of a uh it was it was kind of like a like a smoking like a, a cereal bowl that you could put weed on the other side and hit it from the on the other side like opposite ends and, eat your and you could put cereal in the middle <laughs> okay <laughs> there was a picture a there's a picture like a munchie bowl but there was a picture <laughs> so it looked like a cereal bowl there was a marijuana leaf on one side and that was the side that you could see in the picture and then there was just like a solid color background that was flagged community and the, the, the account was banned for 30 days. Wow. And That's crazy. I'm like, what? It's a cereal bowl, man. It doesn't make any sense. These platforms, you're at the mercy of them. Oh yeah. There's nothing you can do. You know what? And then people, people come to me and they want to know like the tips and the tricks and the hashtags and all that shit. I'm like, there's, there's good luck. 
Braden, tell us secrets. There's no secrets. <laughs> like, it does not matter if you put 20 hashtags or 10 hashtags or five hashtags. Like, Instagram, at one point, they wanted you to have 30. Now they want you to have three to five, right? But then if you do that, well, you I also need to be posting three stories a day, like two reels and like four posts on the feed. And you need to be using – then they, then they made hierarchy tiered – uh, reels so you can earn achievements for the different types of reels that you create and post based on using like the different gifts or the different apps or widgets or whatever else yeah, the on sliders, the, reels the, the polls, sliders. all that. Yeah. yeah. Whether or not you tag people, like then as you earn these achievements, then they start pushing you organically. Yeah. I've seen, I've earned achievements, but I don't even know where to find them. Yeah. But they don't really tell you very easily. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's You're like, true. cool. I got a new bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do I add that to What's my that profile mean? picture? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, do you have any, so we're coming up here on our hour. Do you have any suggestions on who I need to contact for legal advice and why do I need that? Yeah. For legal advice, it really depends on what type of situation you're in. Um, if you were injured, likely it falls someone else. You can contact someone like me who does personal injury. Um, if you're looking into needing a will or someone has passed, um, you look into a estate planning attorney. And like I said, it really depends on your situation because you wouldn't go to um, a, a foot doctor for your heart surgery or you wouldn't go to an orthopedic for uh, a root canal. Um, same thing with lawyers. Even though some lawyers try to be general practitioners, um, those are usually what you want to stay away from because they're not specialized in anything. Um, they kind of just do whatever. And that's especially dangerous with personal injury because a lot of say family law attorneys or other types of attorneys that don't really handle car wrecks or nursing home abuse, products, liability, trucking accidents, especially they don't really handle them. So they don't know exactly what to do. Um, cause there's so many things in the law that you can mess up and so many little tips and tricks and, uh, exclusions and exemptions. Like for example, you can't, you have to give, if you're going to sue a government agency in Oklahoma, Say you want to sue Tulsa, you have to give them notice in a year or you can't sue them if you're hurt. So there's all these little tricks of the trade. And so it's important to go to the type of lawyer that you need. So, Well, that's awesome. If I, if I need your help, why would I contact you? What for? Yeah, so we handle personal injury. So anywhere from nursing home abuse, uh, car accidents, dog bites, motorcycle accidents, trucking accidents. Those are the most common are the car accidents and trucking accidents. Um, products liability, uh, medical malpractice, or mass torts, so talcum powder cases, that kind of thing. Hmm. How do I get a hold of you, and uh, what's your social handle? My social handle, if it's very creative. I haven't told you guys yet. No. Colton, we're, we're about to find out. Colton the Lawyer. Wow. Oh, that's good. Really creative. That's good. <laughs> what, what, what do you what's do, thinking? Colton? <laughs> I'm a dentist. <laughs> so, <laughs> Colton the lawyer. Yeah, Colton the lawyer on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, and then you can always contact me through that DMs uh, or 918 492 7674 or our website at Richardson, Richardson Boudreaux. Well, that's awesome, man. Today's been a pretty good podcast. I, I've learned a little bit. Uh, I hope you guys have learned a little bit as well and appreciate having you on. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've learned from you all as well and I enjoyed it. I That's got one question I want to ask before we call this. All right. We're going to go in a row. You get it first. Do we have to write it down this time? No. Okay. It's, so a, it's a one part it, question. It's not okay. a four, four okay, part question. Okay, it's a two part question, it's actually. A two part so question. Brayden gets it first. Uh, what's, something, what, what's something great that has happened in your business and your personal life in the last quarter? That's an excellent question. Um, in the last quarter, um, biz, I've been blessed with the amount of business. And uh, personally, uh, we've now been approved for a home. So Sweet. we're going to go find a home. Um, nice. That's huge. And that is awesome. The boys, their port, uh, report cards have all been uh, excelling. Yeah. Nice. So Good. math, reading, science, and all their grades are doing well. That's about it. Cool. Colton? For me personally, uh, we had our first baby boy December 27th. So it's not nice. really... Didn't have them during this quarter, it's but close. basically been it's fig- close. Been figuring it out this whole quarter. You probably, it, it never stopped. Yeah, you never probably stopped. came home the first quarter. <laughs> yeah, All right. Oh man, so figuring that out, but it's been a blessing. It's definitely been different, uh, but my wife's my wife's killing it. Um, lets me be here. Uh, and then professionally, 
uh, really just grinding and keeping up with the social media um, and brought in quite a few cases. So that's been good. Nice. Chance. Uh, say as far as personally, um, my house done renovated and it's for sale, finished my mom's house. Now it's ready for sale. And then as far as the business concern goes, we did give away the car and that's all finished and setting up new operations for the next giveaways. Nice. Sweet. Nice. Sweet. Is it a giveaway? Is it a sweepstake or a it, lottery? It, it's the sweepstakes by law. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't yeah. want to get himself in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Legal advice. <laughs> no, uh, information, hey, well, education. What do you got? Man, for business, um, business is just good. You know, uh, we, we're really getting fine tuned in the business. Uh, we started bringing in a lot of bulk material, so we're not going to our vendors a lot more. So kind of catching up on that, that wasted time. Uh, personally, Nothing too crazy, um, and it's not necessarily for this quarter. I've been paying off a bunch of debt, and we should be debt free in a couple months. Hundred percent debt free. So that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, that is huge. That's huge. And then we'll be buying a house like right. But yeah, we yeah. want to we want to not owe anybody first, and then oh, that's one person way too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's over thirty years. So yeah, it's well, okay. well, yeah, whatever. You know, either way, that, that's our plan. We're gonna get out of debt and then just get right back into it way way worse than we ever were. But, you know, it all worked out. <laughs> but lower interest rates, so it's fine. Yeah, right, right, right. And, well, you know, kind of you touched up on it with, you know, having a baby and, and seeing you're about to have a baby. You know, seeing our spouses in that realm and just they're just thankful to our spouses, you know, and, and the, yeah. the things that they do for us that allow us to achieve these dreams that we have for ourselves. And, and you know, my wife has been patient. Laundry. Patiently. Dishes, everything. Dinner. Yeah, groceries. Right. Doctor appointments. Everything. Oh, yeah. Right. And like I said, my, my wife has been patiently waiting. We've been living in that two-bedroom for three years, which is way too small for us. Um, but we'll be debt-free, and we'll be able to buy a house and not have to worry about paying anybody else any money, and it'll be, it'll be awesome. CJ is wanting to sell his house. Go buy it. Yeah, you see my budget's, like, really low because even <laughs> I'm going to owe people a lot more money than I want, I'm not going crazy. I'm just – we're still – we live in a two-bedroom house because we live a very simple life. We're looking for – Probably land, and then we'll see what what falls on that. We found, we've the got like mobile seven. homes nowadays are Man. nice. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely, super nice. Eighty five so, so, so here's the deal, dude. Eighty five grand for what would look like a four hundred thousand so, dollar house, yeah. right? So here's the deal. Straight up. I grew up in a in a double wide that was brand new when we moved in in ninety eight, and I remember growing up, I was like, I hate this. I will never live in a mobile home ever. Now I'm twenty eight. And I see the property that my my parents bought that was woods and a double wide trailer, and it's fucking gorgeous. It's just peaceful out there in my parents' house. The property is gorgeous. The the house, do for what they paid for it, it's like brand new even to this day. I'm like, you just take care of it. It's a shelter. Yeah. And the older I get, the more I realize, you know what? I don't need like give me like the six car shop and like a little single wide. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I need the shop and the space yeah. and the yard. The house, man, we just need a shelter. You know, the kids won't know any different because as I was growing up, like I said, I thought that, but now that I'm older, I could care less. I wasn't yeah. missing anything. It was a great home. And now that we get older with the whole being debt-free, our my, my dream has always been retirement or financial freedom by 35. So with that, I'm like, hey, whatever we got to do financially to keep that debt low so that way I can actually hit financial freedom by 35 and not work right. my life away. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love my kids, I guess. And my, and my wife. I just want to spend all the time with them. That's my goal, too. 35. That's you know, I, I started the business five years ago when we were pregnant with Remy. And I remember having a conversation with my older brother and telling him that I wanted to start the business and get after it as fast as possible because I didn't want my kids to remember what it was like to have their dad gone working. And as I get older, yesterday, actually, we had our, our company meeting here. And uh, we went to, to McNally's for lunch, and I saw another business owner come in with his wife and kids. His wife's pregnant. She got all gussied up. Little baby boys all gussied up. You just know, like, dude, it's a chore to get them out of the house to come have, to come have lunch with the dad. And uh, they ordered the food, and the dad walked outside, and he was on the phone for, like, 40 minutes. Oh. The food was cold sitting there. The wife ate. You could tell she was upset. And it hurt me. It just hurt me. And I told my siblings as we were leaving, I was like, I want to go over there to that guy and just say, hey, bro, put up the phone and go have lunch with your family. Like, the work will wait. Just put up the phone and go have lunch with your family. And it just hurt me because I saw myself. I'm like, I have put my wife through that countless times where I'm like, hey, let's go do something. And then business calls. And here I am. You know, there's a time to where the, 
they'll want to spend time with you. And then when it comes time for you to want to spend time with them, they, won't they won't want be to. available. Right. And that's that's the whole thing. So I literally was telling my wife this and she's like, but maybe he doesn't work 14 hour days. And I'm like, fuck, OK, Ugh, got me, <laughs> you know, and I was like, you're 100 percent right. But yeah. with that, just kind of reinforce the whole idea of, hey, I started when we were pregnant with the idea that within 10 years, by the time my babies were about 10 years old, I should be essentially financially free to where when they're hitting their sports, all the all that fun age between seven to like 12 before they hate you. I want to be there for every second that they want me there. So it was a whole I started a business and started a family at the same time. And it was so hard. Yeah. But man, it's looking awesome. Life is looking awesome. It's awesome. So good to hear. Well, you guys, I appreciate all you guys being on today. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You. Thanks for having I me. Appreciate me. Appreciate each other. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Colton, <laughs> it was great meeting you, man. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed sure, it. Sure. I enjoyed it a lot. We'll see you guys next time on the Bruce and Business Podcast. I'm out. See ya. Bye. See you guys. See ya. Bye. Thanks. Bye.